Welcome back. This is the Network Berg, and in this lecture, we'll be going over some basic self configuration of a MicroTik device. So, this will be us enabling ourselves to connect to the internet using a WAN DHCP client, using uh, IP addressing, as well as masquerading so that we can actually get out to the internet. And I'll explain each of these topics briefly as we run through the setup using Winbox. So, let's dive into it. Alrighty, so we're in Winbox. And to verify that this is a blank configuration, I'm going to look at my interfaces and I can see none of them are bundled in a bridge. I've got Ether1, which is going to my actual home router. And then I've got Ether2 that's connecting to my actual computer, which I'm using to record this. Um, so at the moment I have no internet. I can't uh, go anywhere. Let's just verify if I go into a browser, if I go to, to Microtik's website or Microtik, it doesn't resolve, doesn't do anything. If I go to Google, it's not working. Oh no, how are we gonna fix this? So we're going to fix this by manually configuring this router if, if we don't want to use the default configuration, which I might strongly recommend, uh, is we are going to set up our own addressing. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna sort out internet access from this router. So if I go to my terminal, I just wanna verify still, do I have internet or not? If I ping something like Google, that doesn't resolve. So we definitely know internet's a no-go. So to fix this, I'm first going to set this up as a, um, a DHCP client. So I'm going to obtain an IP address from my ISP. In this case, it's my home router, but perhaps your ISP is delivering the service to you like this. So the, the setup will be quite similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into my IP, DHCP client, and I'm just going to hit this plus, and I'm going to say on ether one, so the interface is Ether1, which is the cable that's going to my normal router. I'm going to use peer NTP and use the peer DNS. And I'm going to add a default route. So when I add a default route, this is effectively giving my router a way to get to the internet. I'm going to go to the advanced, see if there's anything there. I don't want to add anything there. So all I can do is click apply. And there we can see I've already obtained an IP address of 192.168.1.47. My gateway is 192.168.1.1. So that's the gateway to actually get out to the internet. This is the DHCP server's IP. And that is how long my lease is until it expires. Great. So we've obtained a DHCP address for our WAN. So what I want to do is see, is it actually working? Can I ping 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 now? Yes, I can. Let me also just zoom in. Sorry. Let me zoom in here and can I ping Google, which I should be able to because I am using my gateway as the DNA server as well. Perfect. So the router has internet access, but does my computer have internet access? Let's quickly have a look. I'm going to go back to Firefox and I'm going to try and go to Google again and it's still failing. I can't get to Google. So the reason for that is if I go to my interfaces, Ether2 is connecting to my actual computer. And if I go to my IP addresses, IP addresses, I can see I've only got one IP address on the router and that I'm obtaining dynamically from DHCP. So Ether2 doesn't have any IP address that it can use to connect with. So this is not good for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this plus and I'm going to create a new LAN range that my computer can use to connect with. So I'm going to use 192. 168.88.1/24. That's the same IP the default configuration uses, but you can change that obviously. Maybe let me make it 0 0.1 just to show you it works. And then we'll set that up on Ether2. So I'll apply that. Now I've got an IP address that I've assigned to Ether2 that devices that connect to Ether2 can use to get to the router. So if that Ether2 was actually uplinking to a switch, then all of the devices on the switch would be able to use 192.168.0.1 as their default gateway to get to the internet. Let me just quickly set this um, up here. So I'm just going to jump into my network and internet settings and my ethernet. I just need to update the IP address. So my TCP IPv4 I'm going to use the address as 0 0.2 and my gateway will be 0 0.1, which is the MicroTik router. Perfect. 
So we've updated that. And first thing I want to see is in command prompt, can I actually get to 8.8.8.8? .8 I cannot get to 8.8.8.8. .8 can I get to www.google.com? No, that's also failing. Can I get to my gateway? Because that is always a good test to see from your LAN if everything is up. Can I ping 192.168.0.1? That I can ping. So I know connectivity to my gateway is working at the moment. So from my host, from my computer to the MicroTik, connectivity works fine. But from my host to the internet, it doesn't work. But I know from the MicroTik that internet works. So this is strange. How am I going to allow internet access from my host to the internet. And the reason this is wor isn't working is actually pretty straightforward. At the moment, the internet knows how to get to my Ether1 IP address, even though it's natted behind some public IP addresses and stuff, that address is still able to break out to the internet. But the IP address that's assigned to my Ether2, the internet has no idea how to get back to that address. So for that, we're going to use a tool or a mechanism that we call NAT. So NAT is very useful for us, especially in the IPv4 space, since IP addresses have become very scarce in the IPv4 sphere. Um, so NAT enables us to actually hide IP addresses behind other IPs. So this is very useful for, you can actually do something that we call, I, I don't want to call it carrier grade NAT, but you could effectively hide multiple different IP addresses, private IPs, like my 192.168.0.1, behind a single public IP address, so that every connection that goes out to the internet is session-based, but you don't need to give each and every host a public IP, because if we had to do that, we'd run out of IP addresses like in 1970 or something already. So, something to be aware of. Um, what I want to do now is set up the NAT and we're going to call this a masquerade rule. And it, it makes sense, the name, it's masquerade. We're going to masquerade behind an IP address. So what I'm going to do is go to IP, firewall, then I'll go to NAT, and then from NAT, I'll click on the plus, and then you get different chains that you can set. We'll go over all of the different chains and stuff more in detail in the firewall section of this uh, um, course. But for now, I just want you to focus on this is going to be a source based NAT because we're hiding sources. So anything coming from our LAN, the source, we're going to masquerade. I'm also going to set an out interface. So in my case, this is Ether1 because that is actually the port that uplinks to the internet for me and that has internet access at the moment. But if you had a triple PoE connection, you could select that interface as well to masquerade behind that. So effectively, what you'll be doing is you'll be hiding behind the IP address assigned to Ether1. And then I'm going to go to my actions. I'm, I'm just going to set masquerade. That's all I'm going to do. Very straightforward, very simple. I'm going to hit apply. And now that that's applied, I've got a masquerade rule in my firewall. And if I just scroll to the right, I can see how many packets are being sent across. And there's already packets going across. That's interesting. Um, let's go back to my computer. And let's see, can I ping 8.8.8.8? .8 Hooray, I can ping 8.8.8.8 .8 now. Can I ping www.microtech.com? Hooray, I can ping that as well. And can I actually browse? Let's uh, see, can I go to Google? I can get to Google now as well. So this is perfect. And this is just a way to show you how to manually set up stuff like the WAN DHCP client an IP address for your LAN and how to configure very basic masquerade rules. Something else I'd like to show you before we end off the video is just the routing table. So if I go to IP and routes, we're going to discuss the default route quickly, the gateway. Now don't be alarmed, we will be going more in depth in the routing table a bit later on, uh, about the third module. So it's it's not too far ahead, but it's, it's still a little bit to go. Um, but on our routing table, there exists this route that's 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash 0. So that is basically a route that says anything. That is, you can think of that as the internet route. So if nothing exists in the routing table and you see the 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0, this is the route that will be used to get to the internet. And to get to the internet, 
I'm using 192.168.1.1 as my gateway. So that might be your ISP's IP, it might be something else, but just something to uh, be aware of. We'll talk about other things like the distances and these flags in the routing section. I just wanted to mention how your router is actually deciding to get out to the internet. All right, that covers the video. Thanks so much for watching and catch you in the next one. Bye.